Yeah, uh, you know, first of all, I just want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and uh, the, the blessing uh, of uh, what I get to do every single day. And, um, you know, it, not every day it feels like a blessing. Uh, like It's like our business has changed, and um, there's just different things as coaches we have to deal with. But at the heart of it, man, we're dealing with young men, right? And we're getting to impact their lives. And uh, yesterday I got to go see one of our, our GAs, uh, T-Money, uh, get baptized. And, man, it was, it was just so powerful, you know, to – um, hear, hear his message and the impact that our staff has had on his life. Um, and it just lets you know, like, you, you, you're doing it for the – this is why you do it, right? Not, not, not the wins and the losses on the, the scoreboard, uh, but the wins in life and the things that matter for eternity. So uh, just really, really blessed. Uh, you know, tonight, um, you know, we worked on a couple of things the last few days, and I thought we executed those things uh, you know, there. And then so we have a building block to move forward from. And so I'm excited about that. Was very, very pleased with the uh, the execution of the things that we worked on. Tell me about Ugo and just what makes him special. Well, he's seven feet tall and he can run and, you know, decent hands and uh, great personality. And um, so, you know, it's hard to teach that, that, that size and uh, I thought the his teammates did a really good job of finding him uh, because he ran early and established position and uh, that's something we've been on him about because he's capable and uh, and so I was happy to see him uh, rewarded tonight. Is there anything or maybe what have you learned most about him since he's arrived in Manhattan? Yeah he um, you know his uh, his personality profile says that, um, you know, don't be over emotional in, in giving him information, right? So that's a challenge for me because uh, I have, you know, I, I can be a little passionate, um, but I can be a lot passionate. And so I have to learn how to, like, go from one player to the next and, uh, like, just remember, okay, I got to say certain things certain way to him because he really wants to do what we want him to do. And, but sometimes it gets, the message gets lost in the emotion, and so I have to do a better job of that. Uh, no minutes for Doug tonight. What went into that decision? The coach's decision. Was that a, just like a motivational tactic with him? or Yeah, just the coach's decision. Coach's decision, okay. Um, Coleman was pretty hard on himself when he came in here and said, you know, he's, he's just got to be better when it comes to scoring. Just from your perspective, what, what, what have you seen that's been lacking in that part of his game? Well, what was lacking is rebounding, and he did it today. And so I'm fine. Like, I, I know shots are going to – Brendan was 0 for 6 from 3. Coleman missed some layups. They're going to make those, right? They're, they're going to do that because he's a good basketball player. I see him doing it in practice all the time. In fact, he shot the ball better this week than he had up until that point, you know, um, beforehand. So um, him missing layups was all right. Not all right, but it didn't bother me because he got us 13 rebounds and seven of them were offensive rebounds, and he hadn't done that all year long. So it's been a point of emphasis. And so, I, I'm, I mean, uh, he's going to be all right. He's going to be all right there. He still got assists for us. He still made good plays. He had more deflections than anybody else. You know, so I, I'm, uh, I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm glad he cares. And, uh, you know, the crazy thing about it, like, man, he does, like, he, like, he really, really cares, and he's really, really intelligent. So he's going to keep working to figure the thing out, but he's going to make shots. One more with, with, with Ugo, is, are there certain matchups or certain teams where he can play more as opposed to games where he just isn't a, the right matchup? No, it's, you know, we got 14 dudes and, um, you know, 11 of them are new. And, um, you know, just as a staff, we're trying to figure it out. You know, like, I don't know. I, I don't know who the, the five guys that play the best together are yet. I think I do, but I, it didn't pan out tonight, you know, like, so we're still trying to figure it out. And so they'll, sometimes I, I, I just, okay, well, I got to play this guy more just to see what he can do, what he can really do in this environment. Or I got to, well, maybe not play this guy so somebody else can play, you know, and it's not that somebody did something wrong or anything like that. We're, we're just really just trying to figure it out, you know, and it's going to take us a little while. Um, but 
none of that matters if we don't have this, the, the, the staples, right? The meat and potatoes, the, the transition defense so that they have to play as five on five, you know, limit them to one shot, you know, boxing out and defensive rebounding, and then getting a second chance shots on the other end. None of, none of the other stuff matters if we don't do those things. So that's what I got to get everybody to buy into, and then we can figure out the other stuff. You mentioned transition defense and only two fast break points today for Mississippi Valley State. Uh, were you encouraged by what you saw in terms of transition defense? Yeah, very much so. Very much so. And it was off a turnover. And it was like a, we had we turned it over and then stole it back. And then they we turned it over again. It was that stretch where we had four turnovers in five minutes, you know. I mean, because we only had two turnovers in the second half. And so, yeah, I, I was very encouraged because you could see the guy's effort to get from uh, offense back to defense. And, I mean, it's just what we've worked on, and, and it translated, and we just have to keep building on it. Pretty early in the second half, you guys went on a, a pretty big run on offense, and you started finding some shots that were going in. What changed from, I guess, the first half to that beginning stretch of the second half to allow you guys to make those shots? Man, I don't know if I knew I would have done it in the first half. You know, like, But we got really good looks in the first half and was one for 13, and we didn't really shoot the ball well. It was two for 10 in the second half, so it wasn't like we shot it that much better you know, in, in the second half from, from three. Um, I do know that, you know, we spent more than half of practice this past week with a bubble on the rim, and, you know, that, that, that might have played a little part in it. So, um, But we, we improved in the areas we needed to improve, and I know that we can make shots. Max Jones in the second half, uh, I think it was all over the place on defense, and then on offense was probably getting a little bit more aggressive in terms of attacking the rim. What do you see from him in the second half that's encouraging? Yeah, he was Max Jones. Like, uh, you know, um, I say this all the time for every, uh, you know, thousand men who can handle adversity, there's only one who can handle success. And some of our guys and our team, we, ha we have a character flaw that we're going to continue to work on is that when things go well, we relax. Right, so we got out to a pretty good lead. I thought we was like building on the lead in the first half and then we relaxed and closed the half bad. And then the second half, we got out to a pretty good lead and then we let them cut it to 10, right? And, and that, that portion of relax or loss of focus or whatever it is during that time, we've got to fix those moments. So then like, so against a really good team, you're not down, uh, you know, in those times. Is that, I guess, fixing the relaxing, is that something that just takes time to work on? and, and Yeah, well, I, we're going to watch film, we're going to show them, we're going to like, stay on them about it you know just uh we're gonna sub maybe a little bit more that we need to you know and so um you know we'll, we'll figure it out we'll just you know we the well, great thing about our staff is we're gonna keep flipping rocks till we figure this thing over figuring things that this thing out i'm sorry you mentioned the the three-point shooting i think your first five shots were all threes but it also was the guys that typically you want shooting it so are you you're good with that, even though you definitely had an advantage inside? Yeah, you know, I, I tell these dudes in recruiting all the time that uh, every coach wants a guy to make 40% from three. and But to make 40% from three, you have to miss six, right? And and so I told, I'd say it in recruiting, like, you're going to be 0 for 6 from three, and I'm going to just expect you to make the next four and give you the freedom to do it. And I got to show Brendan Housen that at halftime. Hey, bro. You know, I told you I was a coach that could live with 0 for 6 in the first half because I know you're going to make the next four. And just remember the same thing with CJ. I thought um, Brennan guided, like he should have shot the one in the corner, and then he side dribbled, and it looked like he kind of guided it. You know, he didn't shoot it with confidence. CJ missed one, and we got a rebound and kicked it right back to him in the same spot, and he turned it down, right? Like, I, I want those dudes to shoot those shots with confidence. Those are guys that are supposed to shoot shots, and they're going to make shots. Thank you guys. Right, thanks, coach. Hey, go cats.